She's here. The last sip of coffee before, like, the, you know. It, uh, hey, so is it Kate or Katie? Katie. Either way. Yeah. Cool. Well, welcome. Thanks for, thanks for joining us, Kate. Katie, Kate, Katie, Kate. I'll get into a cadence here in a minute. I'll figure it out, what I want to do. So it, do you have snow, too? We have lots of snow. We do. We have some snow. It was really cold today. It was like negative 10 degrees um, Fahrenheit, of course. It would be bad if it was Celsius. But, um, so it was pretty cold. Cool. So thanks, thanks for joining us. Hey, can, are you on your phone? I am. Do me a favor. Can you turn it upside down? Yeah. Uh-oh. It didn't, it didn't do its thing. Yeah, that's no, not going to work. Okay. Just lift it up off the counter. It's echoing. Oh, okay. Is that better? I think so. Yeah, you don't have to hold on to it. Just put it up on, like, you know. You could do the, the, the kitchen thing with, like, in a bowl. Yeah. Okay. You just don't really put it in a bowl. I was just kidding. Okay. So... Thanks for joining us. We usually do like a pre-interview and, and you're too busy to do pre-interviews, I assume. Oh, so from kill me and I missed it. Okay. Not a big deal. Okay. So you know how this goes. We're gonna spend we're gonna spend an hour, we're gonna or forty five minutes. We're gonna talk a little bit about like your business. We're gonna talk a little bit about chocolate and your thoughts about chocolate and a little bit your story too. Cause I like went back and actually did some research and read your blog. Oh god. I heard all, I read all about the New York adventure, the whole find an apartment and like the whole thing. So your life's like an open book. I mean, unfortunately, yeah, but that's okay. Like, so, yeah. So, I mean, obviously you, at some point you fell in love with food. I did. Um, oh gosh, I don't know. I didn't even know how to cook until after I was out of high school, honestly. Like I have made, you know, those bagged um, muffin mixes. That was my expertise. Through Mine too. And I liked frozen now. burritos. Now. 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 I loved frozen burritos. My husband was like, do you want to eat anything that's, at the time, he was, I had just started, met him. He's like, do you want to eat something that's not a frozen burrito or a Pop-Tart? And I was like, I guess, fine. And he, one day he, he was eating guacamole and he said, he's like, you're not going to like this. Don't try it. And I was like, yeah, that looks disgusting. And I tried it. And I was like, this is amazing. I didn't know this existed. So, um sort of my husband had always been into food um he grew up his neighbors owned uh several italian restaurants so he had always been into food and he really taught me how to cook um which is ironic because honestly my mom is a good cook and my stepmom is a good cook so i grew up with good food but i just didn't have any interest. and then um i started doing like the whole oh you know i'm 18 or 19 i'm dating someone we moved in together, I want to be like a housewife, and then suddenly I was like, wow, this is really awesome, and it's it's coming natural to me. I have such an interest in the spices and in the, you know, just everything. I wanted to know, I wanted to know it all. I wanted to be better than anybody at what I was doing, even if it was just home cooking. Um, so I read and I read and I bought so many cookbooks, and then I started sort of, people were like, oh, you should go to culinary school as a joke, and I was like, yeah, one day, you know. So then we started moving around, and uh, I decided I was going to go to school. Um, and I applied to, I remember if it was CIA first, and they needed, I needed um, an internship, like six month internship in advance, because they wanted to make sure that you were pretty serious about it. Um, so I did a free unpaid internship in a bakery. It was the weirdest, most odd like bakery ever it was a jewish bakery with mexican um like specialty items of course <laughs> because it was in southern california the gentleman who ran it was jewish but it was in southern california so we had to carry that as well um so we learned a lot about about baking and he had been taught yeah. so it was kind of a nice little path i ended up actually going to la porte on blue in los angeles um Napa was, I loved Napa, but um, if you know anything about Northern California, and even Southern California, it's really expensive up in Napa to get anything. So we ended up doing Le Cordon Bleu. My husband ended up going with me because he had the GI Bill, um, and he is always interested 
um, in culinary school. And we really, really liked it. And we were super competitive. And in a short amount of time that we had just gotten in, our chef instructors were like, they cannot be in the same classroom. Like, they cannot. We do not. We, like, work well together, but, I'm like, I'm always going to beat you kind of thing. Um, so we went through what we were doing. We decided um, after our after our little certificate, because you can go a certificate route or you can get bachelor's, you know. I was like, well, Cordon Bleu is great, but it doesn't specialize, in my opinion, at the time. Of course, it's no longer a thing. It didn't specialize in anything, really. Um, right. They have their rates, which if you've been in, if you have any, if you know anyone who's in the culinary industry, the placements are just absolutely ridiculous. You end up basically as like in destitute labor. Um, I mean, that's the beauty of it though. I mean, you know, like I, I was actually telling the story this week about like my, my externship and, and, you know, was offered a position at, at a, a, a restaurant that is three Michelin stars right now. And this was forever ago. So this wasn't like two weeks ago. This is, you know, I'm old. So, but, you know, they put a dollar figure on the table. I'm like, mm, but I can't afford the gas to get to work for that. Yeah. Like, how am I going to live? Are you paying my three meals a day? Um, well, I mean, I was going to get two. I mean, so if I work six days a week, that that's pretty well fed. Yeah, that's pretty good. You know, and you do. You work every day. So most of the people that we knew ended up in at Disneyland because we were in L.A. Um, we were in Pasadena. Uh, a lot of them ended up at Disneyland, which actually was a really great job. Um, it is a great I mean, health insurance, like park benefits, like probably 401K. Like, it's probably a great job. Union. Uh, great. And, and, and they're just like, you have to be okay with being little ants on it. Like, you're just following doing it, you're producing, 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 and that's really great. You have no, you don't have as much room for any type of artistic anything, which is whatever, but it, I mean, if you're looking for working in food, but having a career, then yeah, that's a great way to go. Um, a lot of our other friends went to like, just, um, they went to uh, other, other big, you know, really nice places that they also were working with people that everyone they worked with came from a different that's a really great opportunity to be you know, culturally diverse and, and meet people and find other jobs and everything. But um, most of that was, you know, people getting visa, visa labor. So it's a really interesting mix when you're the, you're the person from the country working, when you're working with visa labor, and you're saying, hey, I'm making this much. And you're like, well, that's not fair. I'm making nothing. They paid for my visa, and that's it. So that's an interesting balance too, working at a lot of the resorts and stuff. So that was one opportunity at a culinary school. I was going to go that route because when you're working at something like a large scale resort, you have so much, uh, free, not freedom, but you have so much creative cash flow to do with amazing things. You know, they're, they're investing in every piece of equipment you own, or you guys have, which you know. But um, So that's really cool. And you can really learn on somebody else's stuff. Um, but Jake wanted to do a fine pastry, and I wanted to do a fine pastry, but I not quite mastery. He ended up doing me in mastery, but I knew I wanted to do fine pastry, and I didn't know exactly what. Um, and I had already done chocolate. I, I had been making chocolate for a while at this time, but starting out with chocolate, I, you know, the hair dryer, the one foot by one foot square of marble, and a plastic bowl. Um, so I wanted to find a little bit more intense than that. At, at, um, so we ended up moving to Chicago and he went to French pastry school and I was going to go to French pastry school. Our life got totally flipped upside down. Um, we had two kids by this time um, and I had already been writing my blog because while we were in culinary school I needed to make money. Um, you know, aside from I worked in the bakery in the morning with culinary school for the day did my blogging at night and my homework, and then just, you know, cycling through. So I found out that you could monetize blogs at the time. Um, so I did a lot of that. I did a lot of writing about products and uh, using them. And then I found out that if I'm writing about other people's products, I don't need to do anything that I want to do. Right. I have to make their product look even if their product is a piece of shit. Oh, sorry. 
That's all right. I'll say it at some point if it'll make you feel better. I'll say something, uh, you know. So you're blogging about other people's products oh, yeah. and like not not loving it. Like, no. Like, yeah. but, but you're in Chicago. I mean, Chicago's great. Exactly. And I loved Chicago. And we were staging around at different places. And um, I worked at Magnolia Bakery in Chicago. And that was really fun. Honestly, that was a really fun job. Uh, going in, you know, three in the morning and just making. I mean, like, I remember one Valentine's, we did 14,000 cupcakes in one day. Just on one day. And I was like, this is crazy. And it was actually shortly after Valentine's Day that I that I was like, I don't think that this is where I want to go. I really think I like, I loved doing all the work with the chocolate because they actually did use, at the time, I think they used Berry Calibo, um, that line. I don't even think it was Berry Calibo at the time. I think it was Berry um, But so they used like a, a better quality chocolate than I had had experience with. And I was like, this is really fun. So I started doing chocolate at home on my own. Um, and this is like 2013 time frame, whatever, at this point. And we ended up moving from Chicago. I ended up in Southern California, um, had had our second child by that time, and moved back to Michigan. And then I just started doing wholesale because at the time where we moved to, which is where we currently live now, um, we I, I just I couldn't I couldn't go out and work because I had two two small children, you know, which is a huge problem for women in the industry, honestly. You know, we're not, we have to take time off for pregnancy and babies, and, and that's totally fine. I would do that again every, every single time. Um, but we started doing wholesale, and wholesale picked up really fast. Um, so Jake was doing all kinds of, I don't know, everything from Macron to whatever, traditional American stuff, but mostly um, he was like hand rolling croissants, you know, like crazy. I was like, we need a shading machine. Um, so, we got a big Hobart and, or no, we didn't do a Hobart. We did, it's like Camco or something. It's a Canadian version of a mixer. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I don't remember what the brand is because I don't. You just but, turned it to 2A. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's my Canadian joke, you know. Yeah. But we're a border town, so I can get away with stuff like that. We're pretty close. To, you guys are kind of close to Canada too, though. You know? Yeah. So we're, I mean, okay. So I was making fun of the fact that you're kind of in the middle of nowhere. But real, where in Michigan are you? Like, my Michigan geography is lousy. I know where, like, Detroit is and Lansing. That's it. We're up here. We're, like, not even – we shouldn't be Michigan. We should be Wisconsin. So you are on the UP. We're in the UP, yeah. See, I know that at least. I know that that's the UP, eh? Yeah, it's something like this, eh? Yeah. I don't even know. I don't, I'm not from Michigan, so I'm not as good at – But you're up on the – you're in the Upper Peninsula. You are closer to Wisconsin than you are to, like, yes. anywhere else in the country. Well, we're closer to Canada than anywhere else in the country, but this country, Wisconsin, yeah. So we're like up here in the top, and then Wisconsin, they don't have right. a hand. Their Green Bay is two and a half hours. So. I know exactly where you are. So it's we're very rural, really rural up here. So there's not as many um, options for baked goods anyways, um, bakery items, patisseries, that kind of stuff. So we did, whole, we did wholesale up here, and it was going really awesome, but then we decided we needed a better commercial kitchen because we were renting a small kitchen, kitchen space, which I'm sure many people who have started their own have done that, where you're renting that commercial space. But you're having a shared, so it's like having shared space with other people in the fridge and all that, and how do you, how do you keep it safe when you don't know what other people are putting in the fridge? Um, so we were like, okay, this is some restaurant went out of business, and um, somebody sent it to me that morning and said, hey, this just went out of business. You guys should really rent that spot. So I called the, the business, the owner of the business, and he's like, hey, can we rent your building? And he was like, well, I'm gonna, what did he say? Something like, I'm gonna thumb it for the winter. I didn't even know the term at the time, because we're not from here. And he's like, we're just gonna shut down the pipes and close it. And I said, let me see it, please, can, can we rent it? You know, we just need a kitchen. So we were like, well, we'll, we'll put a kitchen, our kitchen in, and we're just gonna open the front of the house in case somebody wants to walk in and buy something. Well, the in case happened super fast, and it was just like wildfire. Um, people were like, "I love croissants. What is a croissant? How do I say that word? You know, and what is a financier? Um, Tart to tan and all that stuff." So people, people hopped in right away. They supported us. That was really amazing. And we we're like, "Oh shoot! Okay, we actually have a business. This happened fast, you know, uh, or unexpectedly. It just unfolded naturally." 
So I had already been doing chocolate at this point for like on a regular basis for the wholesale. Um, and then we started having chocolate at the shop. And it just grew and grew. And so now I've been doing chocolate 40 hours a week for over two years. You know, well, 40 is nice. It's really like 65 hours a week. Right. But, but you've kind of created a little empire up there, right? I mean, you've got, you've got your, this business we're talking about. You have opened a chocolate shop. And the internet tells me you've opened like a pizza place now too. Yeah. So the restaurant next to us, um, next to our building that we inadvertently ended up in, um, they came over and they were saying, you know, our business does really well. Our management together with they had multiple owners, which as you probably have heard, does not always work out. It's just, it's really hard to make any point. So many owners. So they're like, we're looking to get out of this and just maybe start our own individual businesses. So we want you guys to buy it because this business had so many times that they like had, it was like disheartened about it. Because, you know, they, they just want a business that survives and is steady. And they're like, we think that you guys could be the people who stick with it and stay and don't sell. Um, it, it was a, it's a great business. It's a pizzeria, you know what I mean? Um, I'm actually wearing my pizzeria on this shirt right now. But um, I don't know. I just get dressed in the morning. And I usually wear a chef coat, but not today. Um, Thanks for dressing so up for us. Okay, okay, whatever. That's fine. I have my Val Valrona um, Circle B apron on. So well, I that answers that question. I don't have to answer the, ask the question later what chocolate you use because, you know, we're, we're Circle V, so, you know. Uh-huh. Yeah, we're Circle Here, I'll hide my, my cocoa berry bag. A lot of that before. <laughs> I was using Valrona earlier, if it makes everybody feel better. Uh, the recipe I was working on, is I was using uh, Javara for so. It's all personal preference, and you know, it is what I personally like one that works really well. But I've used a lot of cocoa berry in my life too. Um, but so, sort of the pizzeria thing, we're like, okay. Jake, my husband was like, well, yeah, I grew up with a lot of Italian restaurants. Um, his one of his best friends had all of these restaurants, Italian restaurants in Southern California. Um, Joe Mascatello, and he said, I'm gonna give him a call and ask him about this and Joe was like you need to get into it like if they're gonna offer you a restaurant with pizza get into it change your recipes and make it a deal so we did so we bought the restaurant and because it was right next door easy to manage we re redid their pizzas and we did more of like an Italian style a because of you've never been to the UP you don't understand Gwen pizza then because there's like this special thing about pizza in the UP that it's it's all I don't I don't know how to explain it but it's a different, it's like a white dough, it's, which is not what I am used to as pizza. So, and it's, it's a denser dough, and it's got a lot of chew to it. So, we wanted more of a Napoleon, or a Neapolitan style um, pizza. And we brought in, a, we redid the dough there, we did um, pastas, and then, of course, we brought in desserts. We did tiramisu and cannolis, and we're like, okay, pizza, pasta, salad, dessert. So, we did that, and then... That was actually at the very beginning of the pandemic, um, opening that. Always a great time to open a restaurant. Two. We opened two restaurants during the pandemic. Uh, so then in December, we opened up a second towner. So we have towner, um, the pizzeria Mozzie opened up after that, and then now towner's chocolate. So um, just an extension of towner's pastry, but a lot more chocolate focused. So That's a lot. And, and and you and you're a pretty regular. I mean, I was looking. I'm having problems with words today. I'm not sure why, but so I was digging a little this morning. So I had something to talk about. So I looked a little at your blog, and then I was looking at your Instagram pages. Pages like you have like four. Yeah. That that you're on a lot, right? I mean, not quite Chris Harvey on a lot, but you have four of them. So maybe more than Chris Harvey, but Chris is a good friend. So I'll I can pick on him answering my questions for like two years and I was like at some I said Chris when are you gonna block me and he's like oh no I already have a stalker you're fine <laughs> it's like okay okay but I mean you have two kids you have a husband who you spend all your time with at work so at least three kids three sons yeah I mean so like three times not really on your in your radar it's like you're you're working pretty much all the time yeah, so we figured if we have three kids, we need three restaurants because we give them something, otherwise someone's going to feel left out, you know, so it made sense. Got it. So you answered the question, we're using Valrona chocolate these days, but you still, but I mean, so you spend a lot of time 
not a lot of time, but you spend time on Instagram in particular doing live stuff and really trying to show what you do, which is how, which is why I, you got the phone call for me ultimately. Right. Um, like what is it about chocolate that I don't know that, that cranks the, whatever, there's some term there. My mom would tell me, but I don't know what it is. That's um, so I feel like there are people who buy a ticket to get on a train and then they get on the train and they get off. Then there's people who buy the ticket to get on the train and they're sitting next to Elon Musk and he's like, I think that I could take this train, stick it in a capsule, shoot it at 600 miles per hour, and you could get to LA to San Francisco in 12 minutes. And that's sort of my speed. So I like eating chocolate but I really like making chocolate, which is a really weird way to explain that. But that's sort of my, sort of how I run. I, yeah, I mean, there's a pacing, right? Like, I mean, chocolate, the only way really to go faster is to make more, right? Like, because you've, you've kind of got to, like, yeah. you've got to follow the rules, right? And the rules don't care. No. They right? That piece that I just put, that, that mold I just put in the 10 degree Celsius fridge isn't going to come out in two minutes because I want it to. But. Right? But that train takes a lot of science and a lot of yeah, and that's where I'm. I love science. I love finding out. Um, I love saying, yeah, you can throw in like many Instagrammers do. You can give this little four piece recipe and say make ganache out of this and sell it to them. But uh, when they get it and it's moldy, they're not going to be impressed. So that's where science comes in. I really like learning, and I've always been a learner. I love reading. Um, I love listening to audiobooks and having people explain things to me. I feel like there's a human connection with the fact that if you learn something, hard to say. Okay. If you've ever been a person who's had things taken away from you, like everything, whether it's an eviction or a car repossessed or your life or the person you love, the world can take anything away from you, but they can't take away the knowledge that you have unless you, of course, have something like Alzheimer's. But um, so if you can, if you can consume as much knowledge as possible for as long as possible that you can comprehend it and get to the next level and just keep going, I'd like to have something that I can build on. I just realized that I could have put a filter on the whole time. That's fine. You already know what my face looks like. But. I mean, I think, yeah, you're right. Like when I left, so I left culinary school forever ago, decades ago now. Um, and uh, so somebody just asked, we'll be discussing custom molds. I don't know if we're going to be discussing custom molds. Probably not. But um, I, what? The Rev Human? I, I, I think that's a good idea. OK, we'll get back to it. But so when, when I left culinary school, I had a pastry, you know, like pastry, right? And, and I thought what, really what I wanted to do was be a restaurant pastry chef. Like that was, that was my thing. And, it was why I applied at this, you know, Michelin three-star restaurant and somewhere along the way, it took a right turn, right? Like I ended up in a big hotel. I worked for the Rich Carlton company and, you know, suddenly you're making moose for a thousand people at a time, not five, right? And I think you're right. Like we, we keep taking knowledge and the more we know about something, the less we find out we know. Yeah. Like chocolate. And then we're like, damn, I told people to do that, <laughs> you know? And that happens on a daily basis. I'm like, well, I thought it was the best method at the time. Right. And like, for me, I came to chocolate without really, you know, I, look, I have a BA in political science, right? Like I worked on Capitol Hill for a while, like, and I came to chocolate with a pastry background, not like a chocolate pedigree, right? And so I do things the way I do them. And, and so I don't, I'm not stuck in this, like, it's got to be this way. You know, and I, and I think that's one of the cool things that's been about this project, too, is just getting to people that run their businesses really, really differently. And they're successful. Yeah. And there's, right. I mean, well, what is, again, the phrases that we can't remember. If there's many ways to screw a nail or something. If you don't screw a nail, you hammer a nail. Whatever the point is. I think it's skin a cat. Skin a cat. That's what it is. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but see, you got that one. That was points. Um, so yeah, we're all running our businesses differently. And I feel like mine is very strategic in the way of, I hadn't, 
our businesses were all they all just kind of came to us they weren't we didn't press for them but when we're in them we run it strategically in a point where i know what the cost of i know my wages per hour cost i know every gram i know how much my taco cost per gram i know you know what i mean i'm just you have to you have to be so intense about your quickbooks basically and your you know your data luckily that was culinary school as you know that's one of the classes um that's how I run it. Some people run it because they just like to make really, really, really pretty expensive, super, super expensive product, and they only want to spend, or they want, they don't, they don't value their time. They don't see how much they put into it, and then they only want to sell their bonbons for a dollar, you know. And that's a short-lived business. Yeah, I think what's interesting too about that, and look, I mean, I have friends that are, you know, in some of the bigger artisan chocolate companies in North America and people that are, you know, still working out of their basement, right? So, you know, I work with a lot of different people and, but I consulted for a couple of years and, and one of the things that, and somebody just put making chocolate as a business and yeah, like if you want a hobby, like, I don't mean, and I'm not trying to disrespect anybody, like, but if you want a hobby, that's cool. Like, I, I don't have a problem if you want a hobby. Like I have a hobby that I spend, my wife says I spend way too much money on every year, right? But for me, it's a drop in the bucket. Right. Wait, or wait, no. What is your what is your well, sport? I play squash, and then squash. Oh, yeah, what is the, it? no, I, the broom. I can't afford the broom. Okay, uh, but, I know three thousand. It's just so expensive. Right. I mean, and so you know, and and I have you know a, a Netflix problem. Okay, fine. Like the, I I'm not going to make money on that. I'm not going to be a professional athlete. I'm okay with that. And and I think there's people out in our industry that, you know, they don't have to, they're not, they're not going to support their family with their business and they're okay with that. But at the same time, I think where you were talking before about how do we make product, right? And what do we, the reality of it is, and Chris Harvey was here to teach a class and he said that he's like, look, that's nice. That piece that took you 15 minutes that, and you need that piece, but you also need these pieces over here where you're going to make 500 pieces in that same 15 minutes because you're going to make money over here. So you got to balance and you have to figure out, like, yeah, there are products that we are not profitable. You want to know that my most profitable item is chocolate covered Oreos. Yeah. I have a good friend that makes chocolate covered Twinkies all summer long and can't keep them in stock. And they're $6 a piece. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? When you know exactly what your profit margins on are on every product, of course we do. You know what I mean? I know how much time we're making these products. And a huge part of it is that we don't have equipment. Like I don't, I don't have equipment right now um, yet because we built a product. Or hi, Rihanna. Um, we built a business based on we're having zero debt business, so that if anything, ironically, before the pandemic ever happened, we're like we're going to be a zero debt business, so that if anything ever happens, if we ever have a major injury or any you know health, or we have three children. I mean, they're boys. Things are going to happen. You know, if we had to step away, we can't be in. We can't lose our house because of that kind of thing. Right. So, I don't have any equipment, but I'm getting to that point where, like, somebody somebody last week was selling a used Sony, right? And of course, that instinct of saying I have this, it's a, they wanted it was a one, a, uh, no, a few uh, plus EX with uh, an roving belt, and they wanted eleven five for it, and I was like, oh my gosh, because I had already talked to you about what, and that was actually what they wanted, um, the plus EX with the roving belt. Um, that's like a deal, but then I was I asked about it, and it's like, well, we had an electrician work on it and an HVAC, you know, whatever. And I was like, I can't get a loan for that. Number one, and I, how do I know that it even works? And it was three phase, so that doesn't work in our building as much because we don't own the building. I could get three phase, but it would, you know what right. I mean? So it's like, yes. Do you want to say I want this equipment right now? I want to get it. See this sale, and it sounds great, but is it going to work? No, probably not. And maybe it's not the time to jump in, or maybe you just say, okay, we're going to take the risk of having a loan and buy a large piece of equipment and move to the next level. But you have to be so smart on when is your next level. And and do you have, how much is this equipment going to pick out for you? Do you have somebody to buy that product? Because that's what I see a lot of people getting sell me's. And I'm like, oh, do you guys do a huge amount of volume? They're like, no, but we're going to. And I'm like, oh, that's that's a good business model. <laughs> well, there's 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 a balance there, right? I mean, there there is, and uh, so I look for the between the company that sells it to you. So, like, we want there's something about that too. But 
like we don't want to put a piece of equipment in and be at 100% the day we put it in. Right. 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 But at the same time, right, we don't want to be at 10% of the capacity of the equipment as well. There, there's, you've kind of got to curve that appropriately so that, you know, you have a little bit of room to grow, but you also need to be able to afford the equipment from day one, right? Yeah. Sorry, I'm holding my mic up now. I just, I just got two things of people saying they're having a hard time hearing me. No worries. Um, so, but, I mean, yeah. I think you're right. Like, and I think, you know, the nice thing about chocolate is that you can scale and grow, right? Like, the reality of it is if you don't have equipment, it's a time proposition, right? Like, yeah. I can shell mold 60 molds an hour. Easy. Maybe yeah. 100. Really. Okay, you're, you're better than me, probably. Then, if but, but, but I'm also using a, but I have a piece of equipment that allows yeah. me to do that fairly easily. Yeah. Right? And so those are the places where you kind of have to, as you're building a business, you have to kind of think it through, right? Like somebody asked earlier, are you thinking about being to bar? Being to bar? And, you know, I, I, if I'm a chocolatier, my, my initial answer is no, because I can't make, it's going to take me, the time it takes me to learn how to make really good chocolate, you know, there's already people making really good chocolate, right? And that means like the people that are making really good bean to bar chocolate, cool, that's their gig. Right, but it's but it's hard to do both. It's hard to make really good bean to bar chocolate and make really good confection. I mean, people like fruition do it, but there aren't a ton of people doing it. You know. So, and there's fruition talking. The, the sell me one was the first big equipment, the, the first big investment they made. You know, and but they've grown to other equipment yeah. too. Now. Is it? Oh, uh, are we back? Yeah, you were, I was here, but you weren't. I don't know. Are we, are I can you there? see you. I'm here, Katie. Okay. Are you there? I can hear you now. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, our, um, we're so rural that our internet is not great. Oh. No worries. Nope, nope, that's not us. So. That's where. We have enough. We have enough business going on that yeah, a sell me is our next. That's our next job. But we are already because I, I know I'm there because I'm selling out regularly, and I feel like learning that is really hard because of course you watch people on Instagram and they have amazing machinery and a one shot. Oh my gosh, that would be right after that. I want that. You know what I mean? Like that's where that's where you're gonna go. Um, but I wasn't there a year ago. You know. I, I sure as hell was not there a year ago. So. Is the 352A box for here? Because apparently that's wrong. They want to bring all people. That's okay. Um, we, the business owner gives it, to, or the, the building owner gives it to me when it's. Yeah. I have no idea. I'm sorry. Sorry. Um, but this is what so, we're talking about. Yeah, you're running the build. business too. Right? I mean, you, you, I mean, if you're running three businesses, you know, I mean, there's a lot to do. Right. I mean, there's there's constantly yeah. that influx. So how do you have time for things like new products and innovation? Um, I don't sleep. I'm not a sleeper. Okay. I mean, I love I can sleep for 10 hours, but I just don't benefit or I don't uh, budget enough time for that. I'm one of those people who's like aggressively trying to make up time in their day at night. Um, so I do a lot of a lot of like R&D paperwork before I do the actual lab work. But by the time I get in the lab, it's generally uh, it generally works because I know it works scientifically. You know, if it works right. on paper, then it usually works in practice. And that's only because I know my products by now. And I know, I know what's, what percentage of cocoa butter is going to make what, um, fluidity of a ganache. Um, so, and so we do it that way, but honestly, Jake and I are both really, really interested in keeping fresh ingredients in our products all the time not adding commercial like preservatives and staying in the seasons so creativity just comes very easily as far as introducing the net, the season flavors you know so. but you know the question we're going to ask because you've watched this on occasion what's the one that you did that didn't work there's got to be one that like you were sure it was going to be the number one seller and you're like no this isn't going to work innovation wise sorry i could I said I, I so. Put it here. I'm sorry. No, I, I was saying that that 
you have this great idea, everybody's going to love it, and nobody liked it. What was that one? Because there's got to be one. Last year, hot cocoa bombs. I melted them all again. Right out, I, we couldn't sell a hot cocoa bomb to say like People were like, that's the stupidest idea I've ever heard. And then this year, they were like, where are the hot cocoa bombs? And I was like, should have come last year. So, um, and then flavors, flavor profiles that just didn't work. Orange was not a hit here. Orange is not a big one. Um, nectarines and, and like apricots, um, plums, I don't understand, but they don't, they're not big flavors here. Um, and then, I'm trying to think. I don't know. I'm really, I play it safe a lot of times. I think that's the hard part too. Like I, for me, like I get asked all that question a lot. Why don't you do your own thing? I'm like, because I'm going to try right. things. Like I'm going to want, I'm going to want, like we're doing a recipe right now that we, Beth whipped up this like peanut butter chocolate. Yeah. Like, so it's basically a Jean Duya, but we made it, she made it with honey roasted peanuts. Yeah. And so we've been kind of thinking about that. And she's like, why don't we use that as the shell? Like, as opposed to, like, using it as the center, why don't we use it as the, the piece? So, yeah. like, this morning, we whipped up a little bit of, like, strawberry jelly, and, like, like we're doing a milk chocolate ganache, and we're talking. But, but like, that takes, you know, that's a four-hour project, right? Yeah. And it takes me away from, like, if I was in business, that means I didn't make 500 pieces in that time. Right. But at the same time, so when I have questions like that, when I'm like, oh, this is a great idea. Okay. I think it's going to pan out. Before I even get into the, before I even get really far in depth of it, I ask my people who are my consult, you know, like I ask Chris Harvey and I ask Nicola Batomasi all the time, like questions all the time. Like, is this a good idea? Or how do I do this work? Why would not this work? Um, so I have to rely on have come before me and like julian rose uh, a couple of years ago he's the one who taught me how to balance recipes you know so i'm i'm good at asking people and i think that i'm so like oh you know happy about it that people are generally willing to you know respond you know so i think no the, the, those days look i know all three of those guys right you know i mean mm -hmm. like they're all on the cell phone right i mean yeah I they're think the, pretty pretty amazing yeah i mean those guys are you know i mean i'm I, I answer questions, like, and I know part of my job is to answer questions, but, you know, if people are interested and want to have a conversation, I'm going to have a conversation, because, like, you, I get jazzed about chocolate. Like, yeah. like I yeah. find chocolate really kind of cool, and, like, and fortunately, I have the luxury of not having to produce every day, like yeah. Chris, like Chris has to, right? I mean, Chris, Chris, at the end of the day, better be put out pieces or they're not making money, right? You're right. Yeah. You know, but I think you're right, like, looking outside of our world like another person on the chat were asking your customers about about listening to your customers about innovation yeah and that's part of that process right um but you can see when like like beth and i get excited about an idea it's like okay we're gonna make this work you know yeah. so we'll do the research we'll we'll figure it out and you know? a lot of times when you have a really innovative idea that is just weird to people if you offer it to them for free they're going to come back and buy it several times after that. You know, like, I don't know about that. And then you're like, well, here, just try it. Take it home, decide if you like it. And then come and tell me, like, tell me what you think about it. And then I can buy four of them or whatever, you know, so. Yeah. Right. But I mean, also, I mean, I have the advantage. It's part of our job, right? Our part of our job is to kind of push on things and, and like try to innovate and like come up with that idea that nobody could ever make on a regular basis and then yeah. figure out how to like rein it in a little bit. Right. Yeah. So, but see, what, yeah, okay. is, yeah. yeah. So, in your case right now, what's your favorite piece? Um, right now, uh, what's my favorite? Hmm. I like. I really like like liquor truffles. Personally, I like the taste of like. I'm a cognac drinker. Cognac. I like cognac. So, if I can do like, I have a new Armagnac. Um, bonbon that I'm going to be doing and I have tasted it and I think it's amazing. I wonder if people are going to like it as much as me. Um, so I like that I like that harder shell on the outside and have like a bite through like with the dark um, with the dark chocolate and then on the inside you have a little bit of a creamy texture on the bottom and then like a really seductive smooth liqueur liquid on the top. 
and I just like that texture melt and it's kind of it makes the back of your mouth water and it makes you know you've got all the different spots on your tongue so you have a little bit of salt in the ganache that's underneath but then you have that tartness um, in the liqueur so I like that experience and even though it's so small and it's so rich um, that would be my favorite so, that was a lot I just got but really it was well described <laughs> like hey Come so uh, obviously you're on Instagram. We talked about that. Um, are, is chocolate available to be ordered or is it all pick up? I, it is currently pick up, but I actually have, I think that the website will be going live this week. Um, so I've got like, I've been working with FedEx. We have an amazing FedEx um, provider up here and she, she came in and she was like, okay, we're going to ship it. Cause I was really concerned. As you know, packaging is insane. I mean, absolutely. You have, and ordering online, I have such a stick about this because when you order something online, you're paying that flat rate shipping, right? You're paying for the packaging that your product is in. And some packaging, some chocolate boxes are as little as $4. Some of them are as much as $15 a box. And that doesn't include the food that's inside of it. Um, like Chris's, like, so we bought the very first Anson's box that came out because he had already been helping me for a while and I really wanted to experience it, right? What your product is and at the time we didn't live in LA so I couldn't go there and get it I was like there's got to be $25 worth of packaging in this it's beautiful it's amazing right and the chocolates inside were fantastic um but then you have to also take the price of the product so it makes me nervous to put something up online and have people say wow that's really expensive and then what if they what if they go on our you know google ads or our um you know, people are crazy on Yelp and the Google and the reviews and they want to like crash and trash your business when they've never even had, but then you also have really good people that'll put up good stuff. Right. So I finally was like, okay, I'm just going to take the leap. I'm going to go into it. So I have to talk to FedEx about packaging and how I can get my product without spending an arm and a leg and charging my customer for that packaging. How do I get it to them where it's safely in the, in the right condition? Um, right. So, we did a test run, and our FedEx here locally sent it to the FedEx up north, even though I know there's north of us, there is still something. Um, and they were like, yeah, the chocolate's amazing. It shook up like crazy. So, of course, I had, I was like, okay, now I have to order some different stuff. But it, the, the other packaging came in. I don't love it. It's not amazing. It's not my final packaging purchase. I don't have custom packaging yet, but we will start shipping. So, that was a long, ex I'm so, win I'm long-winded. <laughs> So. Right, I don't have to do much today. It's kind of nice. It's a Friday. I'm not having to work really all that hard. Like sometimes I have to work really hard in this. And today I'm just kind of like I'm hanging out. I'm in for the ride with everybody else. So yeah. somebody asked UK, and I'm going to say no. UP. Then you're in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. Yes. Yeah. And um, and so we're we're kind of running out of time. So you wanted to see something here. So I'm willing to take the tour mm -hmm. and tell me what you want to see because I don't know who I'm going to run into on the way. Okay, um, I want to see a one-shot. Do you have any one-shot set up? I do. Hold on. I got to see if I can figure out how to get the iPad off the stand. Oh, okay. Hey, there we go. Look at me. I'm portable. I'm mobile. You're, you're virtual and, and I know. mobile. So, let's see. So, we're in our... Here, we're... Hold on. Whoops. Oh, I need to order custom molds with our, our Upper Peninsula on it or our UP, our logo, but... I know, I know how to do that because I've looked on your website and I just haven't done it yet. Once you yeah, so we, so, we have a, so we have a new one. We have a new website too, which is kind of cool that has all that stuff laid out. But yeah, so there's a bunch of yes. different like custom mold options that um, ways to do it, some of which you can have custom molds in like a week. Others takes, you know, sculpting and those types of things. But uh, yeah, this is a one shot. And hold on, let me go home. Product selection. Do, 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 do. Hold on, JMA demo. Okay. And then we'll uh, reset. So there's no product in here, so it's not running the product. But um, so in theory, you know, the goal here is you're depositing this. This is a chocolate side. It's getting chocolate directly fed from a tempering machine. And then this side is where the ganache or the filling is. And it, it does all that at once. It's called a one shot because it puts the chocolate and the filling into the machine. <laughs> In one shot. The chocolate. Yeah. yeah so. Wow, I didn't realize that. that, that yeah. Um, but yeah, so it does. It does both things at once. That's and the, it. The, 
the filling actually is what the viscosity of the filling is what um, makes it work. So and that's, that's the one. And with that, I would use my temper, correct? You'd use what? My magic temper. No, you, well, I mean, in theory, you would have it hooked up to a tempering machine. No, no, no. I mean, for my ganache. Uh, you can temper it. Um, we don't always temper when we're going into, into the one shot. It, I mean, we're, we're produ producing the same way that we normally would. Um, it, and the answer, yes, it does close. It closes all at once. Um, it does so the whole thing. What? Yeah, but is it attached to a cooling tunnel? Yeah, so this one is attached to yeah. a vertical cooling tunnel. So this, this one holds about 120 molds. It's called our spider. And so they spin. So let me turn the light on. So inside, there's moving parts that the, the molds come in, and they go up the, the ramp. It's like a giant parking garage. And then they come down a, an elevator on the back side, and they come out. This one's hooked up to actually a demolder. So oh the, pieces, the pieces go in, and then they come out this belt without the mold, and the molds go this direction. So it is, all. it's Willy Wonka. These have never been in hands. <laughs> yeah, somebody just commented too that Valrona's teaching a class. And yeah, Valrona's coming up in September, I think. I should know our calendar, but I don't. Um, it's coming up in September to teach a class uh, on the one shot. Okay, so that is the only class that I wanted to take. Rihanna, my, my Valrona rep, she said, are you going to take any of them? Well, we're going to Paris for Pierre Hermé. Pierre Pierre Hermé. Jake is taking the Paris course. But that, I was like, the only one I would really probably take is the one shot. Um, so I might just have to do that. I think I should probably do that. Right. So yeah. we'd love to have you. So we're hoping that the world is kind of like, kind of coming back to normal by then. So, but we have like, yeah, we've got actually Chris Harvey's teaching online with us um, in April. And okay. then Gonzalo Jimenez is teaching online with us in May. One of those classes in Spanish. Oh, okay. I know. I'm I mean, I don't know who's going to moderate the class because my Spanish is muy malo, but, um... <laughs> Me on si poco. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I know words. My grammar is lousy. So, that's this room. What else did you want to see? We can, we can go... We can... We got, like, two more minutes to take a little more of a tour. Okay. So, I want to see favorite. Oh, what? Panning. I want to see panning. Panning machine. Panning machine. Yeah. Yay! Okay. So this is the 20 kg panner yes. um, with sprayers. Yeah, so they have both hot and cold air. And then this is the 60 kg panner. That's serious. That's serious wholesale. That's a lot. And then what do we have over here? We, um, we have um, blueberries that we did in white chocolate that we added some lemon powder to. Um, Again, Beth has all the ideas. That was Beth's idea, too. Um, I just execute. I just help execute them. And then we have our chocolate-covered Cocoa Puffs, which are my favorite. Oh, that's hilarious. I, I think I saw you guys posting about that. Um, yeah. But, yeah, so those are the two product lines that I would buy. Um, obviously, I think that they're probably the most popular, I would guess. I don't know. Um, but they just seem the, they seem like the next, you know what I mean, get the, right. the, the one. Yeah, so, I mean, I, it's, you know, I live with – lots of tunnels and lots of tempering machines and a bean to bar lab and all that good stuff. So, I mean, it's kind of fun around here. I'm not bean to bar, but that all that, all of that equipment is definitely on the wish list. And luckily we have a 1600 square foot uh, building. So we've got plenty of space for it. You're welcome to come to visit as soon as the world allows you to come and visit. Okay. Well, thank you so much. So, all right. So, um, Eric, Eric from New York city is asking, how does she choose her paints, e.g. chocolate and for why? So I guess how do you choose your colors and your design and all that good stuff? I uh, have a long-standing history and love for um, fresh uh, French Impressionist painting. Uh, anything from about like 1790 to 1815, 1820. I like all that artwork and I basically just am emulsified into that. Emulsified. See how I'm using the wrong words? I'm engaged with that type of, um, that type of, I sort of emulate that, I think. And then the colors are relative to what's inside. Cool. All right. So you know I'm going to ask this question because you've watched this a couple times. 
So you're, you're, it's one of those nights, you're late, you stop, you stop at the gas station to pick up a bottle of water on the way home, and you decide you, you need a candy bar. Yep. And you're at, the, you're at the convenience store, you're at the Beaver Mart, so you're, like, you're not buying like, anything like, high-end. Yeah. What do you pick from the, from the, the shelf? I pick Payday, because I don't like commercial chocolate. <laughs> Payday is just but, not to and I have I have enrobed a payday in Valrona chocolate and it was really good. <laughs> but yeah, that's what I that's what I pick. But if I had to if it had to be a chocolate item. No, you can pick um, that's fine. You don't have to you, you can go with that answer. That's cool. I'm down with that. But I love nougatine. So what is I don't know if that's a is that um I don't even know what product that is. Is that a three month year? Or it's just nougat it? though. It's not nougatine. Nougatine's way too fancy for a three musketeer bar. Okay. All so right. the nougat that has no recollection of real nougat in but the like, world. It's a lie. The whole thing is just marshmallows. It's a Swiss-based marshmallow. No. Um, so yeah, maybe one of those. Cool. Yes. All right. Okay, you got like three businesses to run, and probably it's Friday night, so the pizza place is going to be rocking. Yeah. Yep. Pizza place rocking Friday. Chocolate. What's tonight's pizza? Is there a pizza special tonight? No, we don't really do a lot of specials. We have pretty. Um, relatively priced stuff but tomorrow there's we have ice racing where we're at so if you have your ticket to the ice races um if you bring your ticket you get five bucks off that. what is an ice race what okay so ice race could bring up a lot of things is it like like everybody takes an ice cube and there's a hill and the first ice cube to the bottom wins or Very like is it cars on ice or is it ice skating we do vodka luges on sunday so it's not saturday no um so Racing is four wheelers and dirt bikes. Is it dirt bikes? I've never been. I've never been yet, um, but I believe it's dirt bikes and four wheelers on ice. <laughs> if there was any confusion about whether you were in the UP of Michigan or the UK, all yes. of those questions have just been answered. We know the answer yep. to that now. Yep. Yep. And apparently, it's but motorcycles. It According to Lulu Bell Farms, it's motorcycles on ice. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I, she knows, because, um, yeah, that's what it is. I haven't been. I'm going tomorrow, and I'm very excited. It's nighttime ice races, and it was negative 10 degrees this morning when I left, so I'm gathering that it's going to be very cold tomorrow night. So, but we'll see. All right. Well, Katie, thanks for spending some time with us, and um, I'm looking forward to your visit now. Yes, me too. All right, Brian, thank you so much. Great. Have a wonderful evening. Have a great weekend. All right. Likewise. Thanks. Bye-bye.